Metal Scholars. The recent controversy involving YouTuber Metal Burb and the artist Machine Gun Kelly has, you know, sparked a debate on the boundaries of artistic expression. This book is called The Picture of Dorian Gray. It will help me illustrate my point. I found out about the controversy through Loudwire, the YouTuber Metal Burb. I think he's raised concerns about the potential glorification of arm metal burb who wrote i know mgk sucks and people don't like him but what's up with the guitar being a razor it's almost like it's glorifying harm Schechter, man the scene has problems with mental health and making tools that can cause harm look cool is actually super lame machine gun kelly responded to the post writing you show your lack of depth by taking art at face value this has nothing to do with any of the subject matter you just presented so no, my friend, you suck. And I think it's a guitar done by Schechter. You can see it now here. And it looks like a razor. It's definitely an original design, I'm not gonna lie. And it's similar to, you know, Judas Priest, British Steel, or um, ACDC's Razor's Edge, Bush with Razor Blade suitcase. But anyhow, I think that Metal Burb was morally judging the guitar, right? which prompted a response from MGK. They're both mixing aesthetics and morality. For philosophy, they're gonna be treated as separate realms. You know, you have um, the realm of morality here and the realm of aesthetics there. But uh, every time that we're talking about controversial or sensitive topics, I mean, we can refer to this book here because this situation echoes the themes here in The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, like I said, you know, and right in the preface, there's a separation from uh, morality and art. You know, the artist is the creator. There's a superposition of being right, wrong, and the intrinsic, the inherent value of art uh, for its own sake. Art is a medium for creative expression. And when Metal Burb comes in and he gives this moral critique, in my opinion, he is aligning with the judgmental Victorian society, the Victorian society from this book, which analyzed everything based on moral standards. In fact, most people are going to do that because society, that's exactly how we operate, right? But when we have extreme cases, extreme examples, right? Uh, with like, for example, with the guitar, then the lines get blurred. And that's exactly what the book talks about. And ultimately, I think it's, the book's not trying to be right or wrong. It's a reflection upon the consequences of unrestrained search for pleasure, like dopamine, endorphins all the time. Let's be honest, most artists, they want to be noticed. They want their music to be heard. They want to be praised. That's why they exercise creative expression. You know, it's an outlet, right? But the question is, how free are you, are we, to create? If we live in a society with boundaries, with people who see things differently, we need to worry about the consequences and we need to reflect. But that's not pertained in the realm of art for art's sake. Otherwise, if we treat morality and art like the same thing, we will delve into the various matters, the conservative society and, and stuff like that, you know? So it's not right or wrong, it's just inherent. So let's analyze the situation. Let's first look at Machine Gun Kelly's point of view. Uh, his response to Metal Burb's critique, he defended his artistic expression, right? He said that he wanted to start a conversation. So in my opinion, he's emphasizing the static value of the work. He, uh, he doesn't even know maybe, but his reflect, he's reflecting on this uh, lack of moral judgment. It's just appreciating art from a purely static standpoint. And, uh, and this is exactly what Lord Henry does here, because he says that we're not able to control what other people do, and, and that affects Dorian Gray a lot. But the problem is that the reply, the rebuttal, is contradictory uh, from MGK. So there is a tension, obviously, like I said, you know, between perspectives, because that's how artistic expression works. Ronnie Radke from Falling in Reverse, he jumped in 
in defense of MGK, Ronnie Radke will be like uh, Oscar Wilde, the author, because he is, is going to emphasize that everybody has artistic freedom, but he acknowledges the potential consequences of societal judgment, of, you know, um, just the moral compass, right? Because he says that Metalburb was uh, ambiguous or contradictory when he said that he accepted um, Falling in Reverse's work, talking about guns and violence and everything, but he's judging the razor, right? So here, I believe that we have an opportunity to discuss the balance, balance between creative freedom and balance between societal consequences. And how can we find a good way to live our lives in a way that we are feeling good to be part of society because we're not going to be ostracized. Otherwise, if you're just following your own pleasures, then society will shun you away, right? So what, what do you do? That's the question. But Metal Burb was judgmental. So like I said, you know, he's representing society, passing moral critiques on art. He's the critic. He thought that he was going uh, like some service to the community, but that might be an imposition on others, right? And like I said, you know, the ambiguity, because he tolerates, for example, a song from, uh, from Sleep Token, like Nazareth, uh, which is, you know, a song that's very controversial. And uh, so as a critic, if you mix aesthetics and morality, just like most people, you got to be able to accept the consequences of your actions and your opinion. The story here is about balance. The story is about consequences, the ramifications, the implications of one's opinion, one's experience, right? An event takes place. How do humans react? And the book resonates with contemporary controversy. Like I said, you know, there's a balance between creative freedom. There's a balance between how society reacts to it. So the readers, the listeners, unrestrained creativity, when you live in a society that has rules, might be detrimental, right? The outcome might be detrimental. And it might end up in a tragic story. That doesn't mean that we're telling you to refrain from art. That's the thing. I'm not saying... We have three options, right? Amorality, like amoral, and then moral and immoral. Art, in, 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 in the preface here, he says that art is useless. And what does he mean by that? He means that it doesn't have to be functional. Art is just expression, right? It is an experience. It's an event. Everything that comes after humans, laws, free will or not, consequences, obedience, authority, it's got nothing to do with the piece of art itself. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen later on. In order for us to conclude, I would like to bring the idea of the cattle logic. You have the amoral, you have moral and immoral analyses, and they all coexist because it depends on the perspective and how you look at it and how you emphasize these points of view. And then Metal Burb, like I said, you know, he was morally based on benchmarks. And, and MGK was like nonchalantly focusing on uh, the art itself. This is just for us to be reminded that whenever we have a narrative, in order for people to be creative, in order for people to express themselves, there is a multifaceted nature of interpretation, interaction, um, feelings, emotions, social dynamics, power. We're talking about power, a relationship between art, morality, criticism, and there's an ongoing debate. We generate the debate in order for us to find insights. There's a timeless tension ever so present between art, freedom, creativity, the judgment of others, the consequences, and the experiences and the expressions. What, what do you think? Do you think that we have to abide by the static compass or the moral compass? Or do we have to find a balance? And uh, just please let me know in the comments. Please like and share. And remember that music is what music does. I'm signing out. Bye now.